everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexander of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tonight we're gonna be doing a pick a card pull. And this pick a card pull is intended to be timeless, although it is inspired by the fact that Pluto is now retrograde. Now, Pluto rules your personal power, it rules your shadow self, it rules transformation and death and this ability to be reborn. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been going through a lot of sorting through my shadow self, meaning really taking some time out to kind of examine the darker sides within myself. Not in a way that is judgmental, but allows me to better understand why I do what I do, who I am, where I am going, and what my personal power looks like. And as I say that, literally a spider was just on my leg. And that's crazy too, because I've been seeing a lot of spiders lately that's kind of it's not my animal totem but I feel like it has been my animal messenger so I'm wondering if you guys have that as well but literally it's the spider has shown up when I was when I started working on my shadow self and for me personally this has been about my ability to co-create my ability to exa examine and to be patient and to wait and to listen and then create you know what I mean and there's a, a level of trust that really has to come through um, with that but I could go on and on about you know my spirit guides lately I, I have a video about my animal spirit guides that I work with the most on my YouTube channel, but I'm wondering if you guys are kind of resonating with that. So this pick a card pull that we're gonna be doing tonight, again, is gonna be focusing on those shadow sides of ourselves that it can be kind of hard for us to look at and to examine, but you guys know me. Not only will I deliver you the truth, but I will deliver it to you in a way that, you know, you can use it to transform for your highest and greatest good. For the most part, that's my intention. That's what I would hope and that I my wish for this. So I'm gonna give you a moment to go ahead and decide which one of these cards you resonate with the most. I have not seen these card decks or I have not seen the cards below, but um, the cards that I'm using, I will link down in the description box. But this is card number one. This is card number two. This is card number three, and this is card number four. Go ahead and pause this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and dive in because I don't wanna wait any longer because I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna start with number one. And for those of you guys that don't know, I, I did pick my cards, so I'm pretty excited to see what is going to come up. I'm a little nervous, but it is what it is. Okay, so for card number one, we have the novice, and this is innocence, beginner, ignorance, new skill without practice, and un unstable curiosity and the card number is five then we have the deer gentleness and diplomacy speaking of my animal totem right this is one of them then we have get a new story ask your spirit helpers emotional sensitivity honor and respect your deep sensitivity as it is a gift to us all the cheetah Get clear on your intentions, stay focused, and move quickly to achieve your goal. The honeybee, speaking of spirit guides, wow. Let compassion and forgiveness be your top priority in the situation. Solitude, storm fields. Keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. Honeymoon, enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. Two of Pentacles, the Hermit. Wind, change is coming, and Pine, balance the emotions. Now, <laughs> number one, there is a lot. The word that's coming through is turbulence. There's a lot of turbulence. And it's funny, and it's not funny, but what I'm feeling is kind of like, one of my worst fears, full disclosure, is being in a plane and the turbulence of it, just being totally out of control. And even talking about this now gives me so much anxiety. And that wit, that turbulence usually comes from like, you know, changes in wind and whatever. But so it gives me so much anxiety. Now I know my dad is an engineer, he works with planes. I know that the plane is not gonna drop out of the sky. Like the plane literally cannot do that. But it doesn't matter how many times it you logically explain it to me, it doesn't matter. I still feel what I feel and I have my fear and it gives me anxiety, it gives me tension. Now, when you look at your cards, my loves, do you see all the, 
all of this all of the the change in the energy that's going on you have storm fields here wind change is coming then we have um balance balance the emotions two of pentacles is all about balance then we have sensitivity. We have this emotional sensitivity here, the novice, this innocence, this beginning energy, this budding energy. We have the deer showing gentleness and diplomacy and being um, calm and centered, centered within, within yourself. Then we have the solitude energy. Solitude, the hermit, is all about internal seeking and the honeymoon, which is escaping and removing yourself from what's going on around you. This shows me so much about you know, what it is that you are currently going through and how turbulent the environment might be around you. Sometimes it's not external circumstances, although Pluto, at the time of me doing this, Pluto is retrograde, but if you pick number one, what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is that there is a lot of turbulent energy around you and it could be external or it could be internal. Now, I, I want you to hear me, I want you to hear me out. I have such a strong sense, and I know you guys probably go to all these YouTube videos and all pick all these videos. As an intuitive, I never lie about my feelings. I, I can't lie about my feelings. I always want to give you the truth. And I feel in my heart and in my spirit right now that those that those of you guys that chose number one, you are learning how safe you are and how much sometimes, you know, your fears they're valid, but they're, they're, the fear that you have is not a threat to you. It actually isn't a threat to you. Your worst fear, the thing, this looming um, thing that you may have around you or this looming thought or this plaguing doubt or this plaguing negativity or this plaguing, you know, I don't know if this is ever going to happen or am I in this alone? I just want you to, to really take a deep breath and come back to a space where you have connected with your sense of safety, where you've connected with your sense of purpose. You know, and that's the thing too, is that if you don't feel safe, you can't actually open doors for yourself because you are so locked up. And the thing is, is that I'm seeing is that these feelings that you've been going through, my love, they are there for a reason. The same, the reason why you're fearful is because something taught you to be afraid. afraid. Something in your life was actually traumatic to you and that implant implanted within you and i want to give valid i want to give validity to that you had to have that fear because you have gone through something and in order to protect yourself from experiencing anything like that in the future you have locked yourself you have blocked yourself but you really i really want you to rely on a faith that is bigger than you and me combined as humans you have to i really want to encourage you i don't want to tell you what to do but i really want to encourage you to during this Pluto retrograde phase, I want you to give your fears and give your hope and your faith to something bigger than yourself. Give it to spirit relentlessly. Give it openly. I don't want you throughout this Pluto retrograde phase or without within the next few months. So again, I did say that this reading was going to be timeless and here I am talking about Pluto retrograde. But Within the next few months, I want you to stay in a space and I want to say, okay, so I want to say, I want to say three, the next three months, the next three months, I want you to stay in a space where you allow yourself to totally and give yourself a timeline because you'll know that, okay, after the three months, this is when I can put my feet down and I can take control back of my life. And this is you giving yourself permission for that. And sometimes, you know, you lifting your feet up, knowing that there is an end outcome, it makes it easier for you to step into faith. So I want you to do this. Or at least I want to encourage you to do this. But throughout all of this, no matter what is going on in your life right now, lift your feet up and give it to spirit. Literally give it to spirit. Throughout this entire process, I want you to focus on just you. I want you to focus on validating those fears when they come up and when they surface up, like, nasty mucky water that you thought that you might have um, dealt with already when it comes up instead of judging it just go ahead and observe it see what has happened and then see what you have learned now when I say see what you have learned I'm not saying that you focus on the positive because sometimes people are like oh you know I learned you know throughout this trauma I learned to be strong but what does that strength actually look like? Is it actually strength or is it a weakness? You know, so sometimes when people say, okay, what have I learned? It's like, okay, how have I grown from this? But you have to realize that sometimes what you think, the lessons that you've learned, they might actually be working against you and they might actually be blocking you, okay? So I'm actually getting this visual, again, back to this metaphor or this um, 
visual that I had earlier on where you're in a, an airplane and the, the plane starts to rock and it starts to drop and it starts to flip around and you're like, oh shit, we're going down. You're not going down. Like, please, just for the, the next three months, really just allow yourself to be like, okay, this is going to be a ride. <laughs> Now, I'm not speaking into existence turbulent energy. I'm not trying to speak into to existence incredible change that's going to just like scare the shit out of you. But I think what and what I feel, it's not what I think, what I know is going to happen is that when you allow yourself to kind of go along with this ride, all of these aspects are going to come in and when you are in the solitude space, it's actually going to feel like bliss. Because you are going to see, and it might be uncomfortable for the first five, five days, two weeks, whatever. I actually don't see it lasting as long as you think it will. But when you're in this turbulent area, area allow yourself to ride with this. You know what songs coming to me right now? Like that's the other thing is um, music and songs and lyrics kind of come to me. Um, oh, 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 I'm falling, but I'm taking my time on the ride. Oh, oh, oh. I don't remember the name of that song, but like as I'm going through this reading, that's what's coming through. And it's like, you know what, instead of looking at this as something to be afraid of, when you see it, be like, okay, this is freaking me the fuck out. But instead of me freaking out, I'm going to see this as a ride. And that's going to help me to balance out my emotions and see this for what this actually is. Now, there is some change that's going on here. But at the same time, when you get afraid, I want you to connect and keep an open mind to connect with your spirit guides. I want you to connect with your angels and your guides and look at it in, in, from that perspective. There's a lot of you right now that is so brand new and so gentle and still budding. And we, this meaning, when I say we, it's like spirit, like angels and guides. They're saying, we want you to know that you are in a space right now where you need to be soft and gentle. And we are holding you like you are our, our child. I don't care if you're 60 years old watching this video. I don't care if you're 80 or three years old or 10 or 23 or 33. Maybe just know right now that you're in a space where you are innocent, where you, where we are holding you gently, where even though it seems like everything around you is turbulent, we are actually holding you in our hands and it's your worst fear that is making it seem like it's far worse. I'm surprised that I'm not seeing the moon card here, but I think the reason why the moon card didn't show up is because some of your fears are valid, but it's, it's like the universe is saying, look, you know, and I want to tell you that, you know, sometimes people's fears, you know, they're in their head. I want to tell you that your fears are valid, but you are being so protected right now. And I think that if you go into the space where you're going into solitude and you're watching what comes up, those turbulent feelings, those drug, like that muck that comes up emotionally, that comes up mentally, that comes up spiritually for you, instead of judging it and being like, oh my God, and being freaked out by it, see it for what it is, which is a lesson and and ask it okay what has happened to make me feel this way why do i feel this way when i see this looming monster come up and snapping and snarling at me what is it that i think is going to happen and and look at it in the face almost like when harry potter like when they look into that mirror and they see like their worst fears it's showing you a reflection of your shadow self instead of you running from it and hiding from it look at it and realize that it's just a reflection that's all it is so spirit is really holding you right now and keeping you in a space where it actually wants you to be sensitive it doesn't want you to put on a front and put those walls up because all of that is fake that's not real it it, it admires that that um, strength within you, but you don't need to be strong for yourself all the time. Give it to God, give it to spirit. So I do see a lot of change going on. Um, oh, there's this honeybee card here that I don't even want to try to you know, intuitively connect with this. I just want to read the message, but it says, let compassion and forgiveness be your top priority in the situation. So as these old issues start coming up, I really want you to forgive yourself for whatever you need to forgive yourself for. Forgive others and be more than anything, be compassionate with yourself because you need you right now more than anything because you really are in this space of total sensitivity. Now, there are two numbers that are jumping out to me. There's a lot of numbers here, but the ones that are standing out to me right now are the number five of change and transform transformation, like just total erotic changes, and number 22. And that's the power number. That's the number of mastery. And that's what it is I'm seeing for my number ones is that you are actually mastering yourself. But the way to do that is you, again, balancing what's going on. And the way to balance that is, pretend, is not to pretend like it doesn't exist because it does exist. Remember, we were 
we, I keep saying we because it's spirit, you know, it's angels and, and your guides. They're saying we validate the fact that this fear that you have is very real and very valid. We're not telling you that, ah, the spider's back again. Come on, homie. I love you, but damn. I just don't want him on me. Like, I appreciate the message, but come on. Um, yeah. But, um, sorry, dude, you gotta go. I'm in the middle of a reading right now. I love you, but goodbye. He's like, okay, I'm going over to my pod number three. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, that's what it is that I'm seeing for you guys. I love you so much. Honestly, I'm sending you all my love and my light. Be easy on yourself, okay? Because just be easy on yourself. You know, it's, sometimes I feel like we are harder on ourselves than we need to be. Oh, and when it comes to the cheetah, um, get clear on your intentions, stay focused, and move quickly to achieve your goal. The one thing that I see about the cheetah is that it has that burst of energy because it knows what it is that it wants, and... At the same time, it will exhaust itself. So even though it's all about your intentions, of course stay focused on your intention, your intentions, the things that is that you want. But I also think that you doing small bits, you know, and looking at it, small amounts of change, real, like it's like incredible change happening within your life. Look at it for what it is. Don't expect yourself to keep running and running and running. Like you do have to take pauses. You do have to kind of recollect yourself and to be gentle and compassionate with yourself. Those moments when you do break down or when you do need a quiet moment or when you're like, you know, exhausted or you need time for yourself, those, it, that's valid. Like that's, that's for a reason because you're, you're going through a lot. Like a lot of you is changing internally and spiritually and mentally. So, and emotionally, did I say that one already? Yeah, you're going through a lot emotionally right now. So that will exhaust your physical body, even though it doesn't make sense on the outside, it makes sense internally. Your, in, your internal body knows. So those bursts of energy that you give and that you exert, you know, you do need time and, and rest periods. So give yourself that. And instead of looking at yourself and being like, God damn it, Joanne, why can't you keep running? It's like, well, Joanne, look at all that you've done and you you can't keep running because you've done so much. You've exerted so much energy. So when you come to that point, it's okay to go into the hermit mode, to self-care, to self-soothe, to cry it out, to create that aura soak and that body soak. That's usually what works for me is a detox soak. So I use my charge soaks for that all the time. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of change happening around you, number ones. And I'm actually excited for you. I think, again, if you're on a plane you're going somewhere and it's somewhere you want to be, hopefully, so that turbulence, it pays off. You're not even going to look back at the turbulence. You're going to remember the trip. You're going to remember the destination. That's why you're on this trip, okay? Because you have a destination to go. And now that I'm thinking about it, that makes sense with the honeymoon card. <sighs> okay. I love you guys. <laughs> Moving on to my next group, card number two. All right. So card number twos, we have the mystery, 52. We have Fire Fairy, Creative Action and Optimism. Call on your angels. Time for crayons. Books, your life purpose involves writing, reading, editing, or selling spiritually based books. How did you know that that's what I'm doing right now? <laughs> okay, Gardenia, Emotional Protection. Willow, Veils Parting. The World, Queen of Wands, oh wow. Penguin, the period of darkness that you've been experiencing is now passing. Polar bear, stand up for yourself. Wow, I literally was just about to say that. I was like, I feel throat chakra energy right now. Um, stand up for yourself and speak your truth respectfully and compassionately with no out attachment to the outcome. Cleaning house. Magic prayer. Calling in your soulmate. And it is safe for you to love. Okay, so right away, I don't even want to, I'll organize these cards later. But the first thing that I'm feeling right now is throat chakra. Interesting, because I just spoke about this in one of my other videos. But I'm seeing a lot of stepping into your space where you are becoming so assertive. The, the one thing that I'm thinking about with the polar bear is it reminds me of the Lenormand card. So the bear within the Lenormand is all about that mama bear energy, but when she's in protective mode. And that's what it is that I'm seeing. I don't see you getting into it, going into a space where you are being bossy or you're being bitchy or anything like that. Because sometimes the queen of wands, they'll, they'll be like, oh, you, she thinks she's the boss. No, I don't think I am the boss. I know I am the boss. I am the boss. So sometimes there's that energy where people are like offended by it or 
they are intimidated by your personal power, I don't care how intimidated you are of my personal power. Like that's more of an issue for you than it is for me. That's what it is that I'm seeing you guys is this really like assertive throat chakra. I need to tell you what it is. I need to tell you that I'm the boss. This is what I want. This is what I'm about. I need you, like, these are things that you're speaking out, you're talking about it, you are being assertive, you are being dominant, you are being creative, you are, and this comes from a space because you are actually creating, you are actually creating, and you can't create if you are constantly serving everyone else, if you're constantly being available to everyone else, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm seeing a lot of, um, you know, I don't know if you're writing, I don't know if you are, it's like, I almost see someone putting on a show or putting something on display, so that could be art, but I'm seeing it almost being like theatrical, not in a way that takes away from the energy of it, you know, so sometimes with theatrics, it can be like, oh, you know, is she storytelling? It's like, it almost is kind of like you telling your story. Oh, that makes sense because we have books here. But it almost is like you telling your story, but it's you telling your story the way that you see it. So others may not see it, but that's how you see it. And that's why it's almost theatrical because you're you're displaying it. You're putting yourself out there. You're not holding yourself back. So the only way for you to do that is if you know your story and if you are comfortable with sharing that story and if you give your space give yourself the space to tell that story now i'm seeing um in a, a space that almost almost reminds me of group number one where you're getting a new story for yourself and when i say get a new story for yourself it's you examining your past or you examining how you want to tell your story and telling it the way that is best for you and articulating it in a way that's best for you and in a way that is healing and here's a spider again wow dude you keep showing up do you guys see him look there he is he's on the magic prayer card yes go over there homie um, but yeah, I just see you kind of getting into a space where you are totally moving forward and you're speaking your, speaking your truth, speaking your, your story, telling your, telling, telling and showing things how you see it. So again, this could be you writing a book. This could be you creating like, oh shit, we did see the crayons card, right? So it's like artistic expression and putting it out there. So again, it's not that you're lying. It's not that you're telling like this elaborate, like, you know, um, Shakespearean thing, it's, unless that's how you want to articulate, um, you know, what is it you need to say, what is it that you need to do, but I'm really seeing you speaking your truth and putting it out there and not being so concerned with how other people see it and, and how, in a way that makes it comfortable for others. So again, this could be the creatives, this could be the writers, this could be those in acting or whatever. I, for some reason, it just seems so, like, boisterous. It seems so, like, wow, like, so, um, and I'm, um, the visual that I get is very much like a person on stage, not to say that you are performing. If you are, that would make a lot of sense, but it's just like, it's so like, this is me. This is who I am. I own my, I, my power. I, and it's like, I'm not going to hold anything back. This is like, it really is this, bleh, you know, so that's how I get it. You know, sometimes my visuals don't really make sense, but that's the way that they come through, but that's how it was coming through. Now, I think that for a while you have been in a space where you are very sensitive and again, this really kind of um, reminds me of group number one, but group number two, you have a lot of power that you're drawing into yourself right now. Group number one was very quiet and needs some time for themselves. Group number two, you're just like, boom, this is who I am. <laughs> like, it's like a musical or something. And that's why I'm seeing these cards of it's safe for you to love. Hold on a second. That's why we're seeing cards like it's safe for you to love, calling in your soulmate, this period of darkness that you've been experiencing is now passing, books, time for crayons, um, the veils are parting, call on your angels, magic prayer, this is you. And then, okay, not only are the veils parting, so we have this energy that's going on around you of cleaning house, mystery, what is this, what else do we, do we see here? Veils parting. So basically what I'm seeing here, it's safe for you to love this darkness. All of these cards, the majority of these cards and the rest are talking about you calling things out and you being um, uh, in this fire energy, this strong energy, standing up for yourself and calling out. But all of these cards here are you letting go of the past. 
you relinquishing that and a part of you letting go of what has happened or you know this old story this old stuff this old things that is that you're letting go behind a part of a part of that is you seeing it articulating it getting out putting it out there in some way that is colorful that is vibrant that is yours and then that's when you start from a space that is emotional, not in a way that makes you, sometimes when we say emotions, we think like vulnerable and soft. It is soft, but in that softness, it's strong. And that's where I'm seeing this fire energy. Something about you is very creative. You're going to be creating, you are gonna be articulating your story. You are gonna putting yourself, putting yourself out there. Now, I think that, again, it's almost like spirit and universe and your angels, your guides is saying, tell us, tell us. We, not to say that, you know, God is less than you. Like, God is within you. And God and angels are saying, delegate. Tell us what you want. Tell us strong, tell us firm. Because when we know exactly, and when you step into your voice and you step into your power, we will deliver. Because we know that you know that you are ready. Does that make sense? I hope that that makes sense. But this is again all about you calling it in. Look at all of this, like calling in your soulmate, calling on your angels. The queen of wands is the boss. She knows, she knows her worth. She knows her value. She's not shunning herself. She's not reducing her shine. If anything, she's like, this is who I am. And then makes like a whole elaborate, mm, brah. This is that moment where you walk in, you know, you go from being like, this soft energy or this like timid energy or maybe you were hyper focused on this project or working you have your head down this is that moment where you're like i'm going to the ball and i'm gonna you know put myself on display and i'm gonna turn heads i'm gonna break necks because this is where i'm at in my life right now i put all of this extra stuff behind me all these things that i've gone through and now i'm stepping into my personal power and i want you to see me see me because i am ready i am ready i have what it takes i've been waiting for a long time and i will do whatever it takes i'm going to create my destiny i'm going to call out my destiny if it's love that i want I know my worth, I know my value. That's the thing about the Queen of Wands is that even though she's fire energy, she actually likes partnership and she likes to share her life with someone, but it can't just be just anybody. She's one of those people who will be very selective about her partners, like very selective. I mean, they all will, but the Queen of Wands is known for her independent energy and her life all on of her own. So uh, yeah, whatever it is that you want, you're creating it, you're building it, that magic prayer, whatever it is that you speak literally comes to life. So it, you just need to know what it is that you want and put the past behind you because it served its purpose. That was the mystery of that. That was the magic of that. You know, and the, the future is unknown, but the future is unknown because you're being called now to create it. So that's essentially what it is that I'm seeing. Now, when I'm seeing these cards of um, cleaning cleaning house, you know, and purging, it's safe for you to love. This is you, again, kind of burying things. You know, not burying them and, you know, so that you suppress it, but burying it because you have actually healed from it. Like, you have done it. That's the, wheel, that's the world card. The world card doesn't put things to rest if they, you know, if you haven't learned the lesson. You have learned the lesson. You're graduating. You are stepping out. You are going for that internship. You're going for that job. You're ready for marriage you're ready to go on that trip that travel that's the other thing too is that the queen of wands will travel where did she go damn she disappeared she's like bye guys sorry couldn't wish i could stay around but i can't i got things to do people to see and places to go so that's the energy that you're bringing is you know what i've learned i've seen like i've been there done that and i'm new now like i am actually brand new so I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. If I want to book that trip, I'm booking that trip. I'm out. If I want to write that book, I'm going to write the book. So, yeah. It's safe for you. You've done all the work. And that's what I'm seeing for you right now. Your spirit is telling you that we've cleaned it out. We've buried it. We've put it to rest. We've laid it to rest. And now the only thing left to do right now is to know what I want, to call it in. I don't even see you being afraid. Like, if anything, it's more exciting. There's a lot of exciting stuff on the horizon for you. So that's essentially what it is that I'm seeing here. Okay, group number three. Okay. Uh, so the cow. Oh my God, this is my spirit animal. One of my favorite spirit animals. Nourishment, abundance, asking, receiving. Can I have? Yes, you can have. <laughs> ah! The bee. Luck, industri industriousness. Am I saying that right? And sweet victory. Past life relationship. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> you have known each other before. 
Pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Sacred pool. Wow. Coming apart. Peacock, let yourself stand out and be noticed. Grouse, express yourself through rhythm and movement by drumming and dancing. I've been seeing this card a lot lately. King of Wands, Seven of Swords, High Priestess, Iris, Maintain Hope, Carnation, Follow Your Passion, Past Life Issue, wow, we saw that, didn't we see that? Past Life Relationship. Expect the best and mentors and role models. Okay, so right away. <laughs> Right away, I don't know why, but I just kind of, I don't want to say I feel like whispering, but I don't know why that is, but I just feel like this energy is very quiet. It's very, like, calm. It's very, like, centered. It's very reflective. It almost reminds me of a person who's walking through the woods by themselves, and they need a moment to connect. They need a moment to listen. I almost feel like crying, like I almost feel emotional. I feel like this is a person who has gone through a lot and they just need some time. They need some time and it's it's like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the time when I was living like in, in the, like a moment when I was like kind of living in the woods. It reminds me of those moments where I was like, like spending so much time with, with the woods and with earth and with the trees and looking for the signs around me and I was going through a lot. I had gone through a lot and I was in this space where I was kind of retreating and I didn't realize that I was in a, in a retreat, you know, moment within my life, but I was, I was pulled back away from the rest of the world. And so I don't know what's going on for you guys, but there is a lot of intuition vibes, the energy of intuition. That stands out to me the most. And this is because I'm seeing for some of you guys with the Seven of Swords. Oh my God, Franklin's in the back choking. <laughs> but this gentle spirit, right? It's, it's in order for you to connect with this gentle energy and this powerful energy, even though it's gentle and, and quiet, it's very strong. And this is you, again, it reminds me of when I was walking through the woods, I was spending so much time by myself in nature and I was connecting with myself. I had, if I was with people, I had my earbuds in my ear because I, I didn't need to be influenced by other people. I didn't need to be influenced by other things. And I was in a space of like growing. And I think you really need to listen to your intuition, obviously, because the high priestess is here. But this is about you keeping some things to yourself and you keeping some things private and keeping some things sacred. There is this um, space where it's like almost like whispering, not because you have something that you need to hide, but part of this is not everybody needs to hear what it is that you're doing and that's why it needs to be kept away. It needs to be kept hidden. The other side is I actually feel like you're, you're whispering because you want to hear, you want to know are you listening to me? Like, are you hearing me? Like, if I'm not speaking loud, if I'm not drawing your attention, do you still look for me? Wow, like that's what I'm feeling. It's like, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I wasn't so elaborate, if I, if I was me, would you look for me? If I was, if I didn't come home, would you come out? Would you call? If I, wasn't so you know catchy if I wasn't so vibrant would you still see my shine would you still value me would you still appreciate me there's so much that's with this I don't even know why I want to <laughs> cry with this um but it's like I, I want to lower my voice and I want to see who cares and I'm asking myself do you still care like do you still care are you going to be there for me if I'm gonna you know I think about you all the time and I think about this all the time. Will you come to me? Like, I don't know what that means, but that's what's coming through. There's a lot of um, self-love that that's like in self-worth and self-value that's being kind of put into question here. And I think it's because these are things that were taught to you. 
and you, you want to, you know, I don't want to say that you want, this is, so, oh God, again, it reminds me of the, the retreat center. So sometimes I was just having this conversation with my friend, which it's like when we have these, com like when you're going through a lot, when you have relationships that you kind of like attract these things in your life. And then when you see them or when they appear, you're like, how did the, how did I attract this into my life? Like, how did I attract this into my life? And part of it is because it's there to teach you a lesson, but people sometimes say, well, if you loved yourself more, if you had more self-worth, you wouldn't have even been attracted to that. So now on top of the fact that you experience what it is that you're going through and you feel bad because of how things are happening, now add on to that the fact that you feel guilt because you were attracted to it in the first place. Instead of you being judgmental of yourself, like spirit is being like sad for you. Like spirit is actually kind of feeling sad and being like, look honey, like, don't give so much of yourself and not because it's not going to happen for you because it's not going to occur but you know don't give so much of yourself to the wrong things because you are feeding those things you are giving to those things you are serving those things if you see someone's potential or if you see something's potential something's p potential maybe a job or an opportunity and you've given and given and given because that's what your nature is about then there comes a point where you have to ask yourself, you know, me giving to you, what is it taking away from me? And when I give something to you, something is being taken from me. How is that gonna impact me? And this is why I see you going within. This is why I see you coming within. And I don't see you disconnecting from everyone and everything because there are some people who are going to nourish you. But I think that you need to really go into a space where I almost wanna sit and say to you like who's giving to you right now like what is serving to you what fills your cup up what what makes you feel good what makes you feel safe and i i want you to ask for more for yourself during this time for the next three months i want you to ask more for yourself when someone comes in into your into your life this past life issues not only are their past life problems that you know that have happened that have lessons that have shown themselves and that have taught you like this mentors and role models who were they what what did they teach you you know sometimes when we see mentors and role models like what is it that they've actually taught you is it something that is constructive to you is it something that's helpful and benefit beneficial to you because if it's not, then you want to learn something new. And the only way to learn something new is by pushing, putting yourself in a space where you are experiencing new mentors and new role models and new learning experiences. But if you stay within the same situation, which is like, pay attention to the red flags. Like you have been through some stuff, you know, you and me both, honey, but you have been through some stuff. So instead of being like, oh, okay, I've seen this before, but I'm going to expect a different outcome. Don't expect a different outcome. <laughs> don't expect a different outcome. Expect the best. That's what you should expect. And that's not something that you've been accustomed to because there's a lot of things that have taught you to expect less than what it is that you deserve. And right now, these, these cards, this cow card and the bee card, these two are my animal totems. I work with these animal guides all the time. The cow wants to nourish you. The cow wants your, you to be nourished. The cow wants you to have abundance. The cow wants you to ask for more. The cow wants you to receive more. The bee always promises sweet honey, sweet victory. This card is never a negative card. You deserve so much more. And this is not about you stomping your feet because you have gone through some a lot. You, if there's anybody within this entire system, like all of these cards, that is worthy of having a temper tantrum and throwing themselves to the ground and crying and pounding their fists on the on the ground, it's you. But I don't even see you doing that. And if you do, I feel like you do it quietly because you you have this strength about you. So I do see people around you that are saying, look, honey, don't don't give up. There is something so special here for you. It could be a person. It's going to make you feel like you can sing, like you can dance, like you can really express yourself. And that's what I'm seeing here is that it says, let yourself stand out and be noticed. And then also the grouse, express yourself through rhythm and movement by drumming and dancing. This is, a, a, if you want to dance, if you want to express yourself in that way, by all means, by all means, because I see that being really good for you. But more than that, what I'm getting from these cards is again, back to what it was that I said in the beginning, which is if I'm not speaking loud, if I'm not calling out to you, will you come looking for me? If I don't put in all of this energy and effort 
and attention, will you match me? Will you give to me more? Will you check in? Because that shows me how much you value me. So when you are quiet and when you sit back, and again, I just don't see you needing to be put on display anymore. You don't have, who are you trying to, you know, you don't need to catch anybody's attention. It should be given to you naturally. It should be given to you. You should be nourished just by you being you. I choose you because you are you and that is enough. So instead of expect again, looking at these, you know, things when they start showing up again, when someone's not giving you what you deserve or something is not giving you what you deserve, monetary, you can't survive off minimum wage. No one can survive off minimum wage. Like literally, no one. That's why there's resources set into place in order to put food in people's mouths who are living paycheck to paycheck because minimum wage does not cut it. That's minimum wage in your bank account. That's minimum wage of um, in your relationships. That's minimum wage of self-love. You cannot exist off of lack. And more than that, you of all people deserve more. So instead of you calling out for it, instead of you like putting on a show, you doing that is not going to bring them any closer. You doing that is not going to have them invest in you. They've already made their minds up. They're already giving half, half if, if that. So I just want you so badly, my love, to just disconnect. And this doesn't need to be a sad thing because I actually see you, you know, when you disconnect and when you pull yourself away from that and you go in those woods like, like how I did and you put those earbuds in your ear and you just are not, you're just, you refuse, you refuse to jump through hoops for this anymore. I'm not fighting over crumbs when God has in store for me to have a full meal. And when I had that first taste of that, and when I have that first, like when, I, when my body has a full meal and I'm nourished, I will never take steps back to where it was that I came from because I don't belong there. My future and what God has for me and what the divine has for me is bigger than what you have given me than what I have received. I What's in store for me is so much, it's gonna nourish me. Oh my God, it's gonna nourish me. That is what I deserve. I'm not even afraid of letting go of this because I am stepping into a space where my future is abundantly provided for and more than that, I'm going to abundantly provide for myself. I am not settling for less. I actually expect the best. I'm not expecting or waiting or receiving subpar, subpar bullshit. They taught me that. They expected me to stay there, but that's not where we're staying. I'm gonna reconnect, I'm going to network, I'm going to you know, allow you know, the universe. And I actually see it happening kind of fast. But again, when it's like carnation, follow your passion. Maintain hope. This isn't a hopeless situation. You're not a hopeless person. You're an amazing person. You're a loving person. Your heart is so filled. You were so blessed. So yeah, I don't see this as forcing. And the other thing too is that some of you guys and a small fraction of you, you need to hear this. It's not all of you guys. I feel like 95% of you receive that first message. For the 5%, you know, you're giving less to someone who deserves more. And you're doing it because you have fear. You're doing it because you've gone through some bullshit. You are the one who is giving less to someone who deserves more from you. And you fucking know that. You actually know that. There is someone, no no offense, I'm cursing because my third chakra is activated, but that's just where I'm at in my stage in my life right now. So I'm not trying to offend anybody, but if I did, fuck you, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but there is someone who deserves your reward, who deserves all of you. And if you were to give to them, not only when they asked you to give you their heart or when they asked you for more, not only you giving to them, even if you gave more to others and it didn't work out with others, you giving more to this person is going to be the best thing that ever happened to you because what you put out there is what you receive with this person. But don't allow your past relationships and the past things that have taught you to give less to stop you from giving to the person who would deserve so much and who would give back to you so much. You've actually blocked your blessing because of your own fear and for that there is separation because they know that they deserve more and even though you have all the potential within you, they're not gonna give it to you, they're going to leave. 
and find it elsewhere. And it's going to be so hard for them, but they're going to do it because they deserve it. And you just missed out on the best person. You just missed out on the best employee. You just missed out on the best lover, your soulmate, because you were doing this, you know, you know, this past life issue. Your past is your past. And everyone understands, like the universe understands, your angels understand, understand why you did it. But there's someone who really deserves, you know, all of you. And again, what you put out there is what you receive and they're about they're about to leave like they're little if they haven't already so you really have to step up into that king of wands and independently you know own it this is masculine energy so this could be to to a man or it could be to a, a woman who needs to step into her masculine energy of being dominant and being like look i messed up <laughs> my past life issues got the best of me forgive me maintain hope and follow your passion you actually really truly care about this person that's the truth. You really do care about this person. You really care about this thing. And you need to take a leap. No, I don't even say take a leap of faith, but just step. Step to them and, and articulate it. Say it. Be bold. You can't be meek all the time. You, it's There's a time and a place for you to st um, step out and to speak out. And now's the time. And if not, well, blessings to you. Okay, so group number four. Okay, so group number four. We have restriction. The Water Fairy, Feelings and Emotions, number 28. It's a team effort. Vibe check. Clear yourself. Ask the angels to release any toxic energies that you may have absorbed. Wow. Wow. Time for nurturing. The Garden. Holly, be a spiritual warrior. Six of Cups. Knight of Wands, the boar, face your problems head on with confidence and courage. You will emerge victorious. I'm so feeling these two together. The chimpanzee, use both your into, oh my God, I have like chills right now. There is literally, there is like a spirit just now. Um, not to freak anybody out, but it's just here in New Orleans like that. I still feel it. Um, chimpanzee, use both your intuition and your intellect to solve the problem or get answers to your question. Details, details, slow and steady. Wedding, this situation involves marriage and attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. Okay, so the first thing that I'm seeing here is that it seems like there there's a blockage. <laughs> so it would seem, am I right? But in reality, it's almost like your patience is, is kind of being tested. And I am actually getting a lot of energy in my head right now. It actually feels like my head is spinning. Um, I think it's because there's a lot of energy around you. Again, like I, there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of, oh, the other thing is your body, your physical body. Make sure that you're hydrated. Make sure that you are grounding. Make sure that you are centered. Make sure that you're getting all of your vitamins, your nutrients. Girls, take your iron vitamins because that can make your head spin if you have um, anemia or anything like that. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting right now. But um, this could also be the energies around you, which makes a lot of sense too because we're saying vibe check. Check your vibes. So your feelings and your emotions are outside of the fact that they're very valid and you know that. But when you, when you feel something, do you see how with this like lake here and this water here and this vibe check, it's like a drop. A drop, little like a rock falls in a pond and it sends out ripples. And all the animals that are around, turtles, frogs, alligators, insects that are on the water, those little pond skimmers, they're like, oh shit, something happened over in that direction or something is happening within the water. You are getting that same energy. You're getting that same vibe around you. Like, oh shit, something dropped in the water. What is it? Is it something that I should be concerned about? Is it something that I should be aware of? A part of you needs to, again, intuitively connect with that. A part of you has the intuitive sense that, there, that there's something on, like something going on. The other side of that is I think that you need to like kind of put it down on paper. Okay, I intuitively knew, or this is what my feelings are sh showing me, but intellectually, this is the facts. And then that is going to help you to break through this barrier. It would seem like there's no progress. It would seem like the doors are blocked, but it's not that. It's just that there's either too much or too much. So we're using 
you know, we're using um, the, bo the best of both worlds. We're using our intuitive minds. We're using our intellectual minds. And for me, when I see that, when you take that time to really kind of like, you know, slow yourself down for now, it actually somehow simultaneously breaks through that barrier and that's when things start speeding up. Now, right now, at the time of you pulling this, I feel like it's either, I, I feel like there's a lot of energy that wants to like move forward. There's a lot of energy that wants to race forward. And there's a lot of excitement and, and vibes that are around you. Feelings are high and then feelings are low and every day is like a different thing. So right now, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling is, okay, these restrictions, these blockages, this energy, this excitement that is that you have, it's good that you're using your intuition, but we, we want to make a plan. We want to make a ground, a ground, like a ground work to this. For some reason, I'm getting this vibe of like spiritual, like a spiritual worker. And I don't know. It's not just this. It's not just to be a spiritual warrior because I'm seeing this for some people who need to be a warrior for themselves and need to be assertive and dominant within, within themselves. I'm not really sure what this is, but I'm definitely seeing like a call for you to connect with your purpose, your divine purpose you know, destiny, your purpose, that innocence, you know what I mean? That's like, when I say innocence, I mean it's pure, like within the spirit, within the spirit realm. Like when I'm working with my intuition, I'm working with spirit. So how they kind of articulate things over to me when they say innocence, it's not to say that you are like na naive or anything, but it's just you're you're in this pure state right now where this excitement that's going on around you, what is it you're being attracted to, what is it you're getting pulled to, it's all this like, blah, 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 and it's very exciting because you are on the right path. You are doing your thing, but you're going to like hit these blocks, not because you're not ready, but because you need to get more prepared. And there's, you know, you know that you intuitively know that. So again, there's balance with everything. There's a part of you that connects with your intuition that has to work with your intuition because you seem to be a highly intuitive person and a highly sensitive person. And that's an amazing thing. Then there's this other side of you that needs to come up with a plan that needs to come up with, okay, this is the next level. This is the next step. And that's going to help to open these doors for you. Now, the other thing that is that I'm seeing is that for some of you, it's almost the reverse. It's almost like, again, you are this energy that you have. It's okay. Instead of pushing forward, you are actually being restricted right now. And you're, you're being asked to kind of literally kind of stop and smell the roses and return back to this garden space because emotionally you need to take some time within to just kind of ground yourself and slow yourself down because there's been a lot that's been going on. Now the word innocence is still here. And I see this as she's only just begun. <laughs> this is the start of this new journey. There's a start of this new thing. And there's a lot of things that need to kind of be dealt with first before you kind of explode out, before you kind of explode yourself out there. So when you're in the space right now, you know, instead of like attacking it, instead of like pushing forward and being aggressive and assertive for this por portion, for those of you guys that need to hear this, I'm actually seeing you going into your garden space and actually enjoying that right now. I see this as very pleasure, like very much pleasure induced. Like it's not, um, you know, you know, sometimes when we're like, oh, it's a time for nurturing. Oh, I'm going to be so quiet. I'm going to be so Zen. No, it's like actually very playful. It's very light. Like again, the word was innocent. So I actually see a lot of play and that's why you're being restricted because you're, you've got, you've got to be here. You got to be here right now, present and connecting with people and having fun and, you know, connecting like, and that's going to be good for you. And that's good because you're missing out the toxic. You're missing out on, you know, just what's going on in the outside world. It's like, I almost see like a, a secret garden where you are in this little world of your own. And on the outside, it's like the zombie apocalypse. Like you slowing down, you're missing the zombie apocalypse. You're in this like little fort, like fortress right now. You've got fruits on the trees. You've got fresh water. You've got snacks. <laughs> other people to connect with. So instead of you rushing out into the zombie apocalypse, just slow down and enjoy what's going on right now because right here and right now is exactly where you need to be. So just kind of connect with that. There's a lot of things too. It's like you're kind of missing the details. So if you really slow down and like zeroed in on that, you would see that. But the only way for you to do that, again, is part of your intuition is being triggered and there's that ripple effect, but intellectually, your brain, your logical brain is paying attention to the details and saying, oh, okay, 
I felt this, but now I need to see it on paper and you know, that's gonna make sense why there's a blockage. That's gonna make sense why I need to connect with this person. That's gonna make sense why I can't rush forward right now because I need to reconnect. I need to um, meet up with someone. I need to be with someone. Uh, there's attraction here. Instead of me racing forward and leaving, there's a reason why I'm being restricted and it's probably because I'm about to meet my soulmate or there's some type of incredible attraction that's about to happen, some, some wedding, some, I'm seeing this like, when I see wedding, it's very potential that you might be manifesting, you know, that commitment and attracting that commitment within your life. But it's almost like um, I see like a bond, like a really strong bond that needs to happen here. Now, again, look at the attraction card. She's in this. She's taking a moment to kind of stop and smell the, the roses because she's in a garden space. She's in a wall like she's enjoying this. Look how much garden energy is here right now. It's like paying attention to those tiny details, those things that we would normally miss. And like, what is it that your vibe, your energy is giving giving to you? Like, you know, ask yourself those things. Really kind of like slow down, like slow down. For some of you guys, I'm really seeing you slowing down. And you know, this little guy here is giving her some flowers. They're reconnecting. There's a bond that needs to happen here. And you can't do that if you're racing forward and you're leaving her behind. There's something... Someone's either coming in and connecting with you and there's a bond that needs to happen and that's why you're being restricted from moving forward because you're you're in this right now. You're in this. And you guys need to talk things out. You need to talk about the details. We need to approach this from intuitively I feel this, but how is this going to work? Let's make a plan. So I'm seeing some work here, some spiritual workers, you know, using their gifts and stepping out and actually coming up with a plan. Um, you can't just leap out and be like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do this. Like, oh, well, sometimes there needs to be a little bit of groundwork. There needs to be a little bit more study. There's a reason why you're slowing down right now because, you know. And then for, for the rest of you guys, it's really like you want to almost count your blessings. There's a reason, again, why you're slow. Like, there's a reason why you're being called to be slow right now because there's a bond that needs to be made, a, a connection that needs to be had here. For my number fours. All right, you guys, so thank you so much. I know these videos are always wordy, but it's because I'm a Virgo and I wanna give you the most. I don't like to leave any stones unturned. I wanna give you all of my intuition, all of my messages. I can't really summarize them and hope that you can sense. No, you came to my YouTube channel. Not that anyone's complaining, no one's complained yet. Well, some people have. Well, that's for my videos in the past. But that's what it is that I'm seeing. Honestly, this means so much to me that you were able to watch this video. I I am setting intention that I am experiencing a lot of growth for my YouTube channel lately, so I'm putting a lot of energy and effort into that. I have a specific goal that I have that I'm trying to manifest, but I don't want to speak about it because magic, you know, we don't really talk about things out loud for the most part. We pretty much just write, write them down or set them on fire. No, I'm just kidding, but for real though. Um, but there is a goal that is that I want to want to receive. So I just want to encourage you guys that if you feel called, go ahead and share this video with your friends, tag them, or send it to them in a quick text message. You can easily do that from the YouTube app. Make sure that you are subscribed. Invite your friends, your family to subscribe and speak speak on it, speak on it because. I, again, I want to like manifest this goal. In the meantime though, even if you're coming and going, it's such an honor to be able to read for you. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, my gratitude for that is just abundantly overflowing. Just the fact that you came in and then you received this message and that you took from it what you could and that it made sense and you were able to hopefully heal and grow from it in a way that it helps me to heal and grow. Okay, so if you would like to see more pick a card readings, go ahead and feel free to leave your you know questions of or suggestions down in the comments because i'm going to check on them make sure that you are following me on instagram because some of you guys don't know that i am on instagram so it's bahati life and again subscribe like comment blah, 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 all that youtube schmeal but i'll see you in my next video thank you so much for watching bye